Hey there everyone, Tesla Peg back here again with another video to help you guys figure out charging here in Canada if you happen to live in an apartment or a condo. I will give you guys my personal experience charging these cars as I currently live in an apartment and also I'm gonna talk about a few options that you guys can think about before getting delivery of your new Tesla. My current apartment that I live in right now, I have to park outside in the cold with no heat or underground parking. Now I am moving into a condo soon with underground parking to help me with my situation. But let me tell you guys my personal experience for those of you guys who are watching who are in a similar situation and are planning to buy a Tesla soon. There is a bright side and a downside to parking outside. Now the bright side. Your Tesla will not freeze up and not start up in the morning like other gasoline vehicles. And on the downside, your Tesla will be running all night to keep the battery warm. Now, it's not as bad as you'd imagine. Let's take the average low of the coldest month here in Winnipeg. On a negative 18 degree weather, if you have the car parked outside all night, it loses around 40 kilometers of range, which is like 10% of my Tesla Model 3 standard range plus battery. Now, if I had my car plugged in with a Gen 2 mobile charger that all Teslas come with, I would have gained a few kilometers of range and the battery would be fairly warm when I start my commute in the morning. But here's the sad part. Those plugs that you have in front of your parking stalls only work for block heaters and they're also on a timer to go on and off in certain parts of the day. Now to get the Gen 2 mobile charger to start working and the green light to start flashing you would need a consistent flow of current which these apartment parking stalls do not provide. So what do I do? The best thing to do is to convince your landlord or property management company to install a 240 volt outlet for electric vehicle charging. You can sell them the idea that it will create more incentive to attract future tenants as more and more people are switching to electric or hybrid vehicles in the future. Most property management companies don't have a problem doing this. After they agree to install a 240 volt outlet, you can then go down to the Tesla's website and buy a NEMA adapter that's suitable for your outlet. That will only cost you around $44. The next best thing you can do is download PlugShare from the App Store. This app tells you where all electric charging stations are located throughout the city, what type of plugs each one has, and also reviews left by other fellow EV drivers. Also, you do not need to buy any more adapters for these public chargers as most of them use the J1772 charger which almost all Teslas come with and this is the J1772 charger that I keep handy in my car. When I first got the car, I was not aware of all the apps and the tips and tricks to have longer battery life in the winter so I kept running out of battery fairly fast. I was also not aware that my university had charging stations. So here's my routine that I follow every week with my Tesla that allows me to commute freely and spend less than $40 a month charging it. I supercharge my Tesla every Sunday to 80% and it costs me around six to $10 depending on how much battery life I have left. I use an average of 30% every day for my daily driving, but I also go to university every day for my classes and gym, and I have charging stations there where I charge around 25% every day. By Sunday again, when it's time for me to charge, I usually have around 20 to 30% of battery life remaining before I start supercharging again. 
the only time I have to go out of my way is to charge my vehicle is the 20 to 30 minutes I spend every Sunday evening charging this vehicle. And this is only in winter season. As the weather gets warmer and closer to positive 10 degrees Celsius or more, I would not need to do that anymore. Otherwise, this is the exact same routine that I followed when I had a gasoline vehicle. The only thing that's changed is my parking spot when I go to school. It's in a better and more convenient spot now. Plus, I never have to worry about parking space to park as the EV parking spots are always free when I go to university. Now, keep in mind that I drive like 60 to 80 kilometers every day. Also, I have the standard range plus the lowest in range that Tesla is offering for the Model 3 right now. Now, if you were planning to buy a Tesla and you happen to live in an apartment or a condo with no way to charge, I would highly recommend you get the dual motor long range Tesla Model 3. That way, you will need to make fewer stops to the supercharger. Now, before I end today's video, I wanted to leave a few tips and tricks that you guys can follow that will help you conserve more energy and get more range in harsh Canadian winters with your Tesla. Battery range is affected by multiple factors such as exterior temperature, electrical consumers, driving habits. Okay guys, this is the hardest part for me. Number one, drive conservatively. I have a habit of flooring the Tesla up till the speed limit as I'm just madly in love with the instant torque and how it pushes you back into the seat as if you're in a car from back to the future. My tip is avoid doing that as much as possible and go easy on the gas. Number two, use electrical consumers efficiently. The HVAC system uses a lot of electricity when it is put on high heat, like you can see here. So whenever the cabin is heated, try to keep it on the center like this and use the seat heaters to warm you up as they're more energy efficient than the cabin heaters. My last tip is to stop checking the Tesla app frequently. I am super guilty of this, especially when I first got hold of the app. I've had the Tesla app on my phone for years now, and finally it feels good to be using it. But that being said, you're only supposed to use the Tesla app only when you preheat the car in the morning or when you're charging it. This is because the car is always on sleep mode and launching the phone on your app wakes it up to use the internet. Those are the major things I wanted to cover so that you could get more out of your Tesla. Remember to always maintain steady speeds as much as possible. Avoid a lot of rapid acceleration and stopping whenever you're driving. Be patient and gentle on the accelerator and re let regenerative braking brake for you and put energy back into the battery for longer range. Also, avoid going above 110 kilometers an hour or 70 miles per hour whenever you're in the highway doing long road trips. So that's most of the things I wanted to cover to prepare people who won't have the convenience of charging their vehicle every day. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you next week.